Well, then a real philosophy is not something that can simply talk about black people. It can't. You don't know we exist in some kind of vacuum. We don't want people on the planet Earth. We exist on a, on a planet with all kinds of peoples and, uh, and have a different kinds of relationship to the same social system that has its origin in what? Slavery and colonialism. The system that we live in was born of enslaving black people and colonizing Africans and the peoples of the world. That's where it came from. So if you know where it came from, if you know what built it, if you know what sustains it, then you know what can break it down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you don't understand anything else on the planet Earth, that tells you why the United States government is doing what it's doing in Venezuela today. Yes. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with some corrupt Venezuelan government. How in the hell can the American government call any government on the planet Earth? Trump, you understand? Right. Because people like to hold up Trump. All oh, look at Trump, Trump, nothing. George Washington. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm, talking about, I'm talking about a social system. I'm talking about a social system that got its, that, that has its origin, its foundation in enslaving black people. And that ought to piss you off. You do it. It should. And we're living in a world now where people walk around so proud and so arrogant. And especially the way they despise and slander the African working class who created everything, all the value that you see created by the African working class. Oh. And they treat us with nothing but contempt. Some Negro principal in this city at one time uh, claimed that uh, was actually sending, expelling children because they came to school sagging. Boys came to school sagging. Oh, yes. That's the real problem we got. That's the fundamental contradiction we are confronted with young African boys saying. <laughs> that's the most ridiculous thing that you can be confronted with, but that's the philosophy, the question of philosophy is so important. If you don't have, if you don't have your own revolutionary philosophy, what happens is we end up borrowing the philosophy of our oppressors. <laughs> we end up borrowing the philosophy of our oppressors. And you wonder why you can't get out of this hole that we're in. Because we are informed, our practice, what we do is informed by the philosophy of our oppressors. So that's the work that we've done, a lot of. I mean, that's why I was invited to Oxford, because I've been writing, I've been struggling, I've been trying to sum up this reality, and sum up what is happening with us, trying to carry the revolutionary project forward. Because there is no way out of this by simply talking about we fight against racism. That is the most, that is the silliest thing in the world. That's white people created that stuff. So you tell them, what is fighting against racism? It's something that keeps white people in the center. Yeah. I'm trying to make white people like me. <laughs> That's what they're fighting racism is. I'm fighting to make white people like me. You can't hit them on the head with a brick. Because <laughs> if you do, they won't like you. You understand? So you can't do nothing to upset the white people, right? Because then that allows them to continue to be racist. No, the salvation of white people, the salvation of white people is for them to be able to end their voluntary isolation from the rest of humanity by uniting under the leadership of the black revolution to fight against and destroy white people. Socialism. Uh, socialism. Bernie, where the hell were you 
we've been fighting for socialism for so long. You were a socialist when we were talking about socialism, but what he calls socialism is something about uh, 15 dollars, maybe, maybe after a period of time, 15 dollars an hour. That's socialism? No, 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 Bernie. No, no, no. No, what socialism is, where the producers of the wealth, the ones who produce the wealth, collectively own and control the wealth and the means of creating wealth. That's when the ruling class, when the working class becomes the ruling class. That's socialism. That is socialism. And guess what, Bernie? We might give you $15 an hour over a period of time once we come to power. You know what I'm saying? And now they discovered reparations. This is the, the, the inside the Democratic Party talking about reparations. When we started doing reparations work, and the African People's Socialist Party is most responsible for reparations being on the agenda, period. Yes. We turned it into a, 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 a mass uh, demand, it brought the masses into this thing. When we started doing reparations work, they said we were a lunatic friend. <laughs> reparations, people who want reparations, no. You want us to be, we'd be crazy if we didn't say reparations. We'd be crazy if we didn't say we will pay back all everything that you pay from us. The lunatic friends and those in our community who oppose the reparations, right. right? And so now suddenly they've discovered reparations. Why did they discover reparations? Because the crisis of the social system, the same thing that make them discover socialism. And they discovered so they can take command of the definition of what it means. They discovered socialism because capitalism clearly is something that's killing people, destroying their ability to live all over the world and in this country as well. So now they discover socialism. They discover socialism because that's the alternative to capitalism. And so they want to control and define what socialism is. That's why they become socialists. That's why they're talking about inside the Democratic Party. Jesus was a socialist. Live like Jesus. That's what we want to do. Jesus was, and he was revolutionary too. I know they painted this weird picture of who we were supposed to be, but Jesus was fighting against Roman colonialism. You know? So that's why I know you know that, right? You understand? Uh, uh, and then the, the whole question of reparations. They want to turn the, the meaning of reparations into some new welfare poverty program. No, 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 no. When we get reparations, because we've lived. For so long in this world, this country, and they've even defined uh, as a, a group of people uh, who've been living off the welfare of white people. Yeah. But the reparations demand clarifies that. It shows that it's been white people who've been living off the reparations of black people. Yeah. <laughs> and when Africans understand this, it arms them. It gives them courage. It gives them the ability to go against our president. Stand up in the face of any judge. Who talks about I'm sentencing you this or that because you stole something? How the hell do you accuse me of stealing something when I've stolen myself? Yeah. I, I, I have stolen myself. And, uh, uh, and so we talk about reparations going to unleash a revolutionary movement that will sweep imperialism and white power off the face of the planet Earth, and the human beings can then be free and can have a genuine relationship with, our, with each other without having to try to live in a world of slaves and slave masters and bosses and workers and the rest of that. Cool. So that's what it's about. That's what Austin was about. That's what we took to Oxford. That's what we're taking to the world. That's why it was important for us to be in Oxford so that we can say that there is a legitimate alternative uh, philosophy that is contending uh, for the leadership of African and other oppressed peoples around the world. Oxford recognized that. That's why they would even have me coming from St. Petersburg, Florida, to Oxford, England, to participate in a debate on the Africa question. <laughs> they did not the African-American African question, I think I put it. Not the black, ne the Negro-American question, but the Africa question, because they, we have forced Africa onto the agenda. We have forced a recognition that there is only one Africa and one nation, and that's us. The African nation has been forcibly dispersed around the world. We have told everybody, and now more people are beginning to understand it. I can't get on a boat in Africa as an African in 1619 and then get off as Jamestown, Virginia as a Negro. 